Hey everybody, this is Miss Bianchi. We're going to be playing a game called Shake and Spill. And what you can see here, and I have it right here in this little cup, is the integer chips that we use in class. We have six of them. And just to make sure we understand what's true about these chips, there's a red side and there's a yellow side. And that's true for each chip. There's six of them in there again. So what are the possible outcomes? If I shake this and spill it out and take a look at the results, what are the possible outcomes? Now you can see in this example, we have three that, or four rather, that are red and two that are yellow. So I'm going to put these back in the container and let's do this again. Spill it out and let's spread them out and see what we ended up getting. Right, so we have four red and two yellow. So we know that's an outcome on this thing. Now let's just ask ourselves what the outcomes could be. Now, is it possible that these two could have been turned over the other way and that we would have all red? Yeah, that's an outcome. So in other words, we could have all six be red. That could happen. So another thing that could happen is we can have five of them could be red and one of them could be yellow. We can also have two of them be yellow and four of them red. And we can have three and three. We can have four and two. Five yellow, one red. And of course we can have all yellow. All right, so let's just make sure we understand what the outcomes are. We have all yellow, that's six yellow, zero red. That's five yellow, one red. Four yellow, two red. Three yellow, three red. Two yellow, four red one yellow, five red, or six, zero yellow, six red. Now on your game boards, what would I like you to do? So you have a game board. We've played this game using dice. Um, it's called Over the River Dice Edition. This is Over the River um, Shake and Spill Edition. So on your game board, you have boxes. And the boxes, what we're going to put underneath, if you haven't already done so, is let's put all the outcomes. So this box, you're going to put in you, you don't have to use crayons or anything like that. I think it's adequate just to put six yellow, zero red. Underneath this box, you're going to put the outcome of five yellow, one red, four yellow, two red under this box, and so on. So make sure your game board, whatever pennies you put, or markers, we're not using markers, uh, pennies, we're using um, other types of markers. But you want to get your game board ready by putting all the pos possible outcomes. And by the way, this got covered up, but this is zero yellow and six red. All right, now before the game, you want to ask yourself, are there any outcomes that are more probable than other outcomes? So give yourself um, some time to think about that and maybe either do a tree diagram or you know some kind of an organized list to help you decide whether or not they're equally probable. Now, once you've given time to that, then you're going to start to spread your markers out. So if you, if you think they're all equally probable, then it might be a good idea to just spread load your pennies, you know, and put one in each box. But we are going to keep a dot plot on this as we play the game. And I think what you're going to find is you're going to find something very interesting is going to happen. Now, keep in mind, just like the other game we played, the over the river um, with the dice, let's say your lucky, your, your lucky color is yellow and you want to put multiple things on yellow. Just keep in mind, you can only cross one marker over the river. So if, if all yellow came up, you would cross over the river. So how about we try my strategy right now? I'm going to put these back in the container, and we're going to shake and spill. And I think somewhere on here I have a dot plot. Let's see if I have that kind of ready to go. I do. Here's my dot plot. All right. So I'm going to shake and spill. All right. So I have the outcome on that one was we have five yellow and one red. By the way, if you were the, sometimes what I do is I pick a classroom announcer and I walk around the classroom with this container and I spill it on your desk. If you're a student and I spill it on, de on your desk, that means you're the announcer and you have to very loudly call out um, the outcome. And I'd like you to call out the yellow first, just because that's how we're, we're going to put it on our game board. So if I make a dot plot to represent what we have here, that would be the five yellow, one red. So I'd put an X right here. All right, let's put them back in the container, and we'll shake and spill again. Shake and spill again, and spill. 
All right, so what do we have this time if we spread them out? We have, we got two yellow and four red. So I'm going to put a marker right there. All right, and let's put them back in the container. Shake it up again and spill. All right, so that time I have one yellow and five. So let's put a marker here. All right, put them back in. Shake it up. Spill. All right, and so far that's two yellow, two yellow, four red. All right, let's go again. Four yellow, two red. Hmm, is that more probable? Put them back in. All right, that time we have two red, four yellow. So actually, we should probably say yellow first. That's four yellow and two red. So that's this. All right, now what's interesting, in the data that I've collected so far, so this is we call this a dot plot, um, the thing that's the mode, the outcome that occurred most often, is the two yellow and the four red. And we haven't had any occurrences of all yellow, and we haven't had any occurrences of all red, So, uh, and, nor did we have this. So um, is there something to that? I'm just going to do a couple more shake and still to see what happens next. All right, so this time we got four yellow and two red. So four yellow, two red. That's right here. All right, and we can keep going with this idea. So in class, we're going to play this, and we're going to see who the winner is. But I have my chips in here, my six chips. All right, now what I want to ask you about is so if this if this was my game board right so let's see what we had we had one occurrence of five yellow one red so if we go back did i have five yellow five yellow and one red i did so if that came up i would have crossed my penny over the over the river at that point so anytime one of those things came up i would i would have had the opportunity to cross so that didn't come up so i wouldn't be able to cross that but this did come up i'd be able to cross that but in our game so far that we started the ones that I have here, none of these came up, so I wouldn't be able to cross those over the river until they actually came up. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and play the game. So if you're a, a teacher um, using this video, you're going to hit the pause button, and uh, we're going to play the game. Maybe play a couple rounds. I would say play like three or four games, um, and hopefully we'll realize something to keep the dot plot going. All right, so hit pause, and then we'll hit continue in just a second because we're going to explain some stuff. All right, now one of the things that you should consider is actually putting numbers on the chip. So this is a tree diagram, we call this. And if we branch this out, the first chip, if we put an actual number on the chip, in other words, if I wrote the number one on this chip and I stuck like a, you know, like a Sharpie and put the number one on it, and then I put the number two on, on the second chip and actually wrote the number two with a Sharpie, this, what I'm about to show you might make a little more sense because at first, People think that the number of outcomes that we have is actually the same as what we see here. So people think, because I'm if I count the number of outcomes I see here, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven outcomes. And people think, well, the probability of getting all yellow is one out of, out of that many, seven, right? But if we make a tree diagram, let's go back to my tree diagram. If chip number one, if chip number one could be either red or yellow, then what's true about chip number two? So if chip number one is red, chip number two could be either red or yellow. And if the first chip is yellow, then we could have the red or yellow. So if you kind of see where I'm going with this, see chip number three could be either red or yellow. And then chip number four could be either red or yellow. And if I kind of keep going with this, do you see it's getting a little cramped? Red or yellow, red or yellow. All right, and then I'd have to keep branching, right? Like red or yellow and keep branching. See, I don't even have enough room. Now, some of you have seen, um, let's see if I can find, ah, this is what I'm looking for. Some of you may have seen, um, I actually used this from uh, an, an NCAA bracket. And it, 
made a nice tree diagram for me. And if you look at this tree diagram, what do you realize? So what I have here is I have chip number one being either red or yellow, chip number two being either red or yellow, but what if it's yellow, then we have the same outcome. Now, if we count all the outcomes here, the branches, then it's a little bit small for you to see, but if I count, see that's one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, count all the way down. How many outcomes is that? And that's just if the first chip is red. What if the first chip is yellow? So you have that number going this way too. So what I'd like you to take a moment to do is actually figure out how many outcomes there are. And if you follow these branches, see, this is all six chips. Now I see one outcome of them all being red. See, only one. So if we follow, this would be uh, red, yellow, red, 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 red. You know, so that's uh, following these branches. That's just one example where you have one yellow and the rest are red. So, you know, if we were actually going to go through this and determine which in tally, which one, which branch, if you follow the branch, you know, gives you which thing, you're going to realize that we actually have 64 outcomes, 64, because here we have 32 in this bracket, just like we would in basketball. And we have 32 in this bracket, and 32 plus 32 would be 64. So we really have 64 total outcomes. And what makes this a little bit complicated, what's probably the easiest thing to figure out, is the probability of all red, all six being red. And you can see that that would be 1 out of 64. And if we were going to do the same thing with yellow, the probability of all yellow would also be 1 out of 64. But what you should do is just take a moment to see if there are any kind of shortcuts or patterns that you see that might make it easier. If I asked, asked you to find the probability of each one of these things, um, that's a little tricky. You'd actually have to do a little bit more with the math. So give that some thought. And if you have something to turn in, uh, show it to me, and it could be worth a little prize for you. All right, so hopefully you had fun with this game called Shake and Spill.